Hi, my name is Rishta and today we're going to learn how to backtest trading strategies. But before we start, let's try to understand what backtesting is and why it's important. So, say for example, you have a strategy in your mind and you're very confident about it because you've been trading since a while and you know how the market works. So, you put in your money in that strategy, but instead of making money, you end up losing money. Now, did that happen because of sheer bad luck or did it happen because your strategy was not, just not as good as you thought it would be? Let's take a step back and try to understand. It's probably because your strategy was not as good as you thought it would be because that's what happens with most of the traders in the market. So what should you do to avoid this? The answer is very simple. All you have to do is follow a system. This system involves creating trading rules so that you know when you have to enter and when you have to exit and there is no subjectivity. All you have to do is create the entry and exit rules and follow them from the beginning to the end. Most people lose money in the market because their methods are not validated. To validate your strategy, the best way is to check your strategy's performance on past data. And this is called nothing but backtesting. You go back in time and you check your strategy on past data, hence the name backtesting. Now that you've learned what backtesting is and why it's important, let's try to backtest a simple moving average crossover strategy in Python. The strategy that we are going to backtest is very simple. It has two rules that you need to remember. Moving averages are technical indicators that are used to identify trends. We will use two moving averages, one with a shorter look back period, which is which we we'll call short term moving average, and one with a longer look back period, which we we'll call a long term moving average. Let's go over the trading rules once. Based on the strategy, we will enter a long position when the short term moving average crosses the long term moving average from below. And we will exit this trade when the short term moving average crosses the long term moving average from above. We will set the signal to 1 whenever the short term moving average is above the long term moving average. So, you know the trading rules now. Let's go ahead and backtest the strategy with Python. Based on the strategy rules, we've already set the signal to 1 wherever the short term moving average was above the long term moving average. And we've stored all the data that we've made in a CSV file. So, let's start. We will start by importing the necessary libraries, which is pandas and numpy, which is used for data manipulation. After importing the necessary libraries, we will now go on and import the data. We've stored all the data that we need in a CSV file named trading signals MA crossover 2010-2022. We will read this file using the read CSV method of pandas. We've imported and stored all of this in a data frame called data. Next. We have to calculate the crossovers. Now our long entry will be confirmed when on the previous day the short term moving average was less than the long term moving average and on the present day the short term moving average is greater than the long term moving average. So when this condition is true, we will enter a long position. We will also create a column named long crossover to store the long crossover conditions. We will also create a column named exit crossover to store the long exit conditions of the moving average crossover trading strategy on a given day. Long exit will be confirmed today when the short term moving average was greater than the long term moving average on the previous day and the short term moving average was less than the long term moving average on the present day. We will exit the long position once the long exit is confirmed. Okay, so the steps to backtest the moving average crossover strategy are Every day you have to check if the current position is 0 or 1. If it is 0, then you will check the long crossover column. If it says true, then you can enter a long position. If the current position is 1, you will check the square of crossover column. If it says true, then you can exit the long position. Alright, let's start with creating a data frame first. We'll call this data frame the trade sheet where we will store all the trades. To create the data frame, we'll use the data frame method of pandas. The next step is to initialize the current position as zero. So we have created a 
we have initialized the current position as 0 over here. Next, we will define the variables entry date, entry price, exit date and exit price. These will be the columns of your uh, trade sheet. We'll start by creating a for loop to check the current position every day. We've defined the variable long crossover that stores the long crossover condition on the current date. And we've also defined the variable exit crossover that stores the exit crossover condition on the current date. We will enter the long position if we are not holding any position and the entry condition is met. So if the current position is zero and the long crossover condition is true, then we will set the entry date to the current date and the entry price to the close price of the current date. And we will also uh, update the current position to one. Next, uh, we will exit the long position if we are holding a long position and the exit condition is met. So if the current position is one and the exit crossover is true, we will set the exit date as the current date and the exit price as the close price of the current date. Finally, we will append the details of this trade to the trade sheet data frame. We will take all the necessary columns that is current position, entry date, entry price, exit date and exit price. Long position is closed, so we will update the current position to zero. Then we will define the names of the columns in the trade sheet. Instead of current position, let's call it position. Entry date is entry date. And for the entry price, let's name it entry price, exit date and exit price. This is what the output looks like. For every position that you've taken, you can check the entry date, entry price, exit date and the exit price. Now that we've generated the trade sheet, let's calculate the profit and loss for the trades generated in the backtest time frame. So first we will save the trades generated in the data frame named crossover trade sheet. This will contain columns close, long crossover and exit crossover. Then we will calculate the PNL for each trade. The formula is pretty simple. You just have to you just have to deduct the exit price from the entry price and then multiply it with the position. If the position is zero, which means there is no current position, then automatically your PNL will also be zero. But if it is one, then the PNL will be the difference between the exit price and the entry price. Finally, we'll take the sum of the PNL of each trade. This is what the final output looks like. The total PNL of trades generated between 2010 and 2022 is 1,505 dollars. That is all for this video. I hope you've got a pretty good understanding of what backtesting is and why it's important and how you can do it very simply using Python. So now that you know what it is and how you can do it, go ahead and backtest your own strategy on a stock of your choice and let us know the results in the comments below.